Good morning. She has red head now. Okay, Mother. Okay. Let us begin with the metta practice. May all beings be happy and secure. May all, May all beings, beings have happy minds. minds. Whatever, Whatever living beings there may, may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as the mother would risk her own life to her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart, one should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing or sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this universal, living, friendly thought in our mind, let us begin our mindfulness practice as we repeat every day let us focus our mind on our breathing without verbalizing or conceptualizing without trying to control breath just let it flow in and out as we pay attention to the breath we notice the breath touching our nostrils, reach our lungs. Then we the lower abdomen expanding, chest area expanding. And when we breathe out, we notice the lower abdominal area contracting, chest area contracting, and the breath leaving our nostrils. As we breathe out, and in like this, we also notice very brief pause between inhaling and exhaling. Also, we notice our breath is rising and falling, feeling rise and falls, perception rises and falls, Thought rise and falls, consciousness rise and falls. As they rise and fall, constantly, repeatedly, in this way, we notice the breath becomes relaxed. The body be relaxes and the mind relaxes. When they relax, we don't try to hold on to anything because they always rise and fall, rise and fall. So no desire arises in our mind to hold on to anything. And then also as a result of this rising and falling, <coughs> we relax all our rigidity, uptightness, temporarily fades away, then our feeling of metta arises. When metta feeling arises, we also notice that our compassion arises. When compassion arises, our resentment or our 
thought of cruelty will no longer be there. Restlessness and worry will no longer be there. And then we keep focusing our mind on the breath. Then we, our sleepiness and drowsiness fade away because the mind gets energized with that energy. We don't feel asleep. And seeing all this, we build up our confidence in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. With this confidence, we keep breathing in and out. Then whatever doubt we had will fade away. And then the body and mind will be filled with joy, which leads to tranquility, that leads to happiness. Happy state of mind prompts concentration to arise. They happen in this way by themselves. Everything and always we notice this. As we gain concentration, our awareness of impermanence, of subtlest things, that is body, feeling, perceptions, thought and consciousness. There we see rising and falling in the subtlest way. And then rigidity, uptightness fade away. We don't have any notion of self or permanent entity at that moment. To gain this realization, we continue to practice our meditation with total mindfulness.
Suffering be free from suffering. May fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So to may all beings be. With this metta thought, let us focus our mind on the answers to these questions that uh, Brian will read for me. Dear Venerable Sir, could you please explain how you see at the breath and anapana and analyze with five aggregates? I think uh, I answered this question before and every day in our guided instructions I mentioned this but I don't mind repeating it again no matter how, how much time you ask me, I will answer, give the same answer. And one day you will realize how the five aggregates work while we are focusing mind on the breath. What are the five aggregates? Form, feeling, perceptions, thought and consciousness. Our breath is a form. And this form is not static, permanent, eternal entity. It is changing. How does it change? Breath is our body conditioner, body conditioner. That means breath brings oxygen. Now oxygen is not something static. This oxygen keeps changing very quickly. And then when we breathe out, we breathe out oxygen-free breath, carbon dioxide, then no longer oxygen there. Then we have to take oxygen again. Again the same thing happens to oxygen. Once oxygen goes into the body, into the lungs, that blood purified, charged with oxygen goes to the heart heart pumps and this blood rich with oxygen goes all over our body. Every little blood vessel, every tiny little capillary is filled with oxygen rich blood and they also consume this oxygen as very quickly and then oxygen will no longer be there in those cells, in those capillaries, and then the that blood without oxygen return to the heart, then heart pumps it that into the lungs, and then lungs charge it with oxygen, and then again the blood circulates throughout the body with oxygen in it. So oxygen circulate through the blood circulation all over our body every fraction of a second, every moment. So that is why we have to begin and again and again. This is a bodily function. This is form. In the subtlest form, this is a form which is made up of earth, air, water, fire. Our breath has air element, water element, 
earth element and fire element. And the breath is made up of these four elements. In the real way, subtlest way, you can see how all these elements make our breath. And then the, it is this breath that changes always as we breathe in and out. Oxygen is exchanged with carbon dioxide. And this is happening all the time. And this is how this aggregate of form changes. Aggregate of form changes. Friend, this is the most realistic way, the scientific way, real happening in us all the time. That is why the breath is called body conditioner. It conditions every fraction of a second with new oxygen, new cells, new blood circulation. It happens all the time. Then we cannot see this in our with, with our normal eyes. We also don't feel it that quickly. But when we gain concentration, we feel this function refreshing our life. This inhaling, exhaling, keep refreshing and disappearing. Again, refreshing and disappearing. So this is how the first aggregate changes. And this is how the first aggregate becomes impermanent. No question about it. You try any scientific method. Ask any philosopher, any psychology, psychologist, any biologist, any physicist, any chemist. You will get the same answer. That the body is changing in this way. It is impermanent. Definitely it is impermanent. And feelings. As we breathe in and out, feeling is the second aggregate. We feel nobody with the conscious mind. We, of course, when we breathe in and out, uh, in, uh, in, in sleep and so on, we are not aware and therefore we are not uh, uh, feeling. But, the, any, but any moment, we pay attention to our breath, we see the feeling, we experience the feeling, feeling of inhaling, feeling of exhaling, feeling of the pause, we feel. That feeling is not static, not fixed. It arises as breath arises, it passes away when breath passes away, and you also can see can see dependent origination there, rising, falling. When the breath rises, feeling rises. When breath falls, feeling forces. That same type of feeling rises and falls, appears and disappears, because it is not permanent. So the feeling is impermanent. You can experience the impermanence of feeling even more clearly than you experience impermanence of the body, form. All you have to do is to pay attention. Then, the thought, <coughs> uh, feeling, perception. Perception is the third aggregate. What is perception? Mentally, we become aware of this breath. Perception is called cogni cognitive factor in psychology. We cognize and recognize. Therefore, it is called recognition, recognition. We recognize the breath. We recognize the feeling. We recognize uh, our experience uh, 
and therefore that recognition arises as breath arises. That recognition passes away as the breath passes away. That arises and passes away. That arises and passes away. This recognition. Then our thought, we intentionally breathe. This intention is the thought. And that also rises and falls as breath rises and falls. That is the nature of impermanence. It is, it is always changing, arising and passing away, arising and passing away. Then the consciousness. All these we become aware, aware of because of our consciousness. <coughs> they can be in details, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, body consciousness, tongue consciousness. Any time consciousness arises, in a, in a real sense, consciousness quickly changes. Cognition, cognitive effect, perception, uh, perception of uh, depending on the uh, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind, rupa, sanya, and uh, uh, perception of uh, sound, sight, sound, smell, taste and thought. This is called rupa sanya, sadha sanya, gandha sanya, and they also is ar uh, arising and passing away. Then uh, whatever arises passes away, all the five aggregates. You cannot do anything intentionally without the five aggregates getting involved. <coughs> For instance, <coughs> you cannot snap your finger without five aggregates involvement, five aggregates involved in a finger snap. For instance, when you bring two fingers together, two fingers are formed. And then you, when you snap, you feel the snapping. That is a feeling aggregate. Then you hear the sound. That is your perception aggregate. You hear the sound. Then these two must come together, you know, in order to make it. So uh, feeling arises because of this contact. Two. And then we are conscious of it. Two fingers are formed. The touching of them is uh, contact and the feeling arises. When you snap, that is the feeling aggregate. We hear the sound, that is perception aggregate. We uh, con are conscious of it, that's consciousness aggregate. And we think of doing it, that is a volitional formation aggregate. So all the five aggregates must involve in your finger snap. You can see how quickly the five aggregate arises and passes away in the finger snapping moment. This you all, you have to pay attention to understand this reality. This is how you ask how five aggregates uh, involved, five aggregates change when we breathe in and out, you see, use the word anapana. Anapana means inhaling and exhaling. Uh, Parna means life. Inhaling, exhaling is called anapana because that is the one that brings life. Ana bringing oxygen. Parna leaving oxygen free carbon dioxide. And when oxygen gum comes in, we live for that moment. When oxygen leaves, our cells die. Of course, not all die at once because so many cells are there, trillions of cells. Uh, we don't feel it, we, uh, but it happens. 
uh, the, our the brain may not last uh, more than uh, I think five minutes without oxygen. You may check with your biology teacher, biology lesson, how long our brain can live without oxygen. So, uh, you can see the whole life is uh, depending on oxygen in exhaling, therefore it is called Anapana. When we talk about living friendliness, we call Sabbepana. All those who have oxygen to live, whether they are very tiny little ant or big whale or elephant, they all need oxygen to live. Therefore, it is called Anapana. And they all, this mechanism mechanism of change is taking place in every tiny little uh, existing thing. Changing and changing and changing. Okay, next question. Thank you, Bhante. Next question is uh, quite similar. Um, I am trying to incorporate your teachings into my daily routine. Um, could you please clarify the following? When I take a walk, how can I bring in the five aggregates and the four elements? I feel the wind blowing, hear the birds singing, my feet touching the street, wind, heat, sweat, and I see the, the beautiful flowers and think they are beautiful. Uh, and then she wrote, have pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral feelings. So you mentioned some of the aggregates there. You said you feel the touch of your foot with the ground. The, 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 that is your body form aggregate. While you are walking, you feel. That is your feeling aggregate. When you are walking, you perceive your, uh, you, recognize, you recognize your touch and your feeling, that is the third aggregate, perception aggregate. Then you think of walking. It doesn't happen automatically. That thinking is volitional aggregate. And of course you have to be conscious. You are not a sleep walker or robot. You are conscious. That is your consciousness aggregate. You can see all you have to do is, to, is just to pay attention and understand what the aggregates are. Then you can see all these aggregates are involved in the walking. As I said, if five aggregates are involved in one finger snap, how much more you can understand or better understand how five aggregates involved in walking and therefore it is uh, very easy to understand and at the same time you will see uh, that as soon as you touch the ground with your foot you feel the hardness that is earth element when you lift the foot you feel the foot is coming up that is air element when you, after a while, you will perspire, that is water element. And then you feel the heat of your, that is heat elements. So all, all these elements, all these aggregates work together always when we walk. Even when we sit, all these aggregates work together. Aggregates and elements are working together. Uh, tomorrow when I talk uh, on the remaining part of Akalika Dhamma, 
I will explain it even little more detail and subtle detail. It, it can be so deep and subtle. I bet you all fall asleep tomorrow. Hmm. Uh, here's another question. What is the best way to assist someone who is in hospice care, end of life situation? I think uh, that is the best way to help that person is to make the person aware without getting uh, upset, emotional, try to pay attention to the breath and see how breath comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes, and see how breath is becoming subtler and subtler and subtler. The person can become very calm, peaceful uh, all the time. Of course, in uh, I heard that they are given uh, uh, morphine and so forth to uh, make them feel comfortable. Uh, if they are in pain, uh, but uh, before this uh, morphine was introduced or discovered, uh, the Buddha used uh, this method to make our mind calm, relaxed and peaceful, even in that state. You may hear, you might have heard that when the Buddha was uh, suffering from diarrhea and he was utterly dehydrated and uh, there was no uh, saline or anything those days, and yet because of the Buddha's perfectly enlightened state of mind, he was able to remain calm and peaceful because he used his breath free from greed, hatred and delusion. Pure and clean air was uh, moving back and forth. The mind is lodged, connected with this air, and the mind becomes very much like air. No feeling. Air doesn't have feeling. Air doesn't have perception. Air doesn't have um, consciousness. Air is just air. He made his mind just like pure air and passed away. All enlightened persons can pass away even when they have physical aches and pains as they learn to pay attention to the breath. So even somebody is in hospice, uh, we have to encourage the person to be quite aware uh, of uh, the reality of impermanence. Uh, when we say everything is impermanent, sometimes people can become emotional, but we can tell them how to pay attention to the breath and focus the mind on the breath and become aware of breath rising and falling. What we do there is teaching them how to become mindful of impermanence without using the word impermanence and notice rising and falling. That is 100% true. Breath is rises and fall. Breath is rising and falling. Rising and falling. If we were to use a very a deep uh, uh, dependent origination teaching at that time, uh, sometimes uh, people may not gra grasp it, but if we can tell them, yes, whatever arises, when it arises, you feel that arising. 
whenever it is passing away, you feel that passing. So we can teach that, that just the person to stay in that particular uh, way so that the mind will be calm, relaxed and peaceful. Thank you, Bhante. Yes? Uh, I think we have time for one more. <clears throat> uh, dear Bhante, regarding metta meditation, a certain teacher taught us to radiate to ten directions. Another teacher taught us to radiate from our immediate surrounding and gradually outwards toward larger and larger spheres until the whole, until it reaches the whole universe. Which method can Bhante advised to adopt? I think both are equally good. Starting from one point and spreading it all directions uh, and go to the uh, universe. Universe is boundless. Universe is illimitable, no limit. It is uh, in the whole universe, there can be some living beings wherever there is oxygen, wherever there is water, moisture, there can, living beings can exist. And we don't know how many and where, but it is very good for us to assume we are not uh, uh, always uh, trying to find uh, facts and figures of who, what kind of life, where they live and so forth. Even this, uh, this, this uh, uh, astrophysicists uh, very humbly admitted that their sphere is limited, their universe is illimited, illimitable, and uh, they even have not concluded that uh, life exists in such and such a uh, plane and so forth, they not uh, come to any conclusive decision. And therefore, we all assume that there are living beings anywhere, in any direction, any part of the universe. And therefore, starting meditation from one point and spreading in uh, ten directions is also very good because the direction itself themselves are not li not limited for instance if you think of the east you can keep thinking of east for entire life you will never find the end of east mm -hmm. wherever you go you can see east is still further away similarly west east, uh, south South is north, north is north, and so on. Go into any direction looking for the end of that direction. You never find it. There is a discourse called Shohita Sutta in uh, Sangut Nikaya, and uh, he was uh, once a deity, and he had uh, supernatural powers. And he went looking for the end of the universe. And he went to the universe and a, a place where there is no death, sorrow, lamentation, and so on. And he went on in all these directions, in the way we think. We, we think. And he, came, he, he traveled 100 years and at the speed of maybe bullet or light, because he is so powerful. And hundred years he traveled like that, and still he could not find the end of one, any direction. So when he came to the Buddha and reported this to the Buddha, he said, yes, you are right. But I also must say, without seeing the end of the universe you cannot end suffering. On the one hand, we said, 
by traveling you cannot go to the end find the end of the universe but without seeing the end of uh, universe you cannot end suffering that means end in the universe in that then this course is us and if we don't see us exactly as we are we cannot end suffering when we see us as we are we can end suffering so buddha first ad- admitted what rohita said then buddha brought him to his own senses and said uh, you don't try to find the universe end of universe by traveling but you can find yourself and end your suffering here and now seeing this truth of appearing disappearing appearing disappearing appearing disappearing you cannot find any end any part of the world the universe is always appearing and disappearing every time little part of the universe arises something arises and passes away something arising and passing away that is the whole universal fact that is the universal fact we we are in a miniature uh, microscopic universe in this universe you will see what you see the macrocopies what you call macroscopic universe or, uh, or the other universe that we are physical universe we are thinking of and therefore uh, what is the question uh, how to what is the question oh it's just on uh, a method for practicing metta metta so <laughs> metta. right so the yeah, metta also is like that no bound no limit no uh, end we unconditionally we practice it within ourselves i think friends this is a very good question all the questions are very good stimulating questions and uh, we want to wind down this session with the metta last question is a good question to end the session metta so with this uh, uh, metta thought let us wish all those who are suffering now no matter where they are uh, homes or hospitals or wherever uh, may they be free from suffering and uh, return to normal life and continue their dhamma practice and uh, liberate from suffering from samsara samsaric suffering and others uh, they are uh, they are loved one passed away they have grief may they be free from grief and understand dhamma and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering there are many very uh, compassionate selfless uh, doctors nurses who sacrifice their life they are they take a lot of risks in taking care of this contagious disease and patients uh, we want to wish them to be free from any contact with this uh, covid 19 and continue they are very marvelous service selfless service and live long in very good health and there are many who financially support uh, this this it is impossible for people to do to a lot of things without finance and they are very generously very kindly spend their very uh, hard earned uh, money to support these people we want to wish them also to be generous and compassionate and continue their metta practice and there are many leaders who have done wonderful job to curb the the covid 19 and may they continue their service 
and live long in good health and attain liberation from suffering. And there are some other leaders who are who may be thinking that they are doing a very wonderful job, but it is uh, 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 it has not produced uh, tangible, positive hopes and results. However, we want to wish them, uh, wish them understanding, compassion, wish them to make wise decision to help these people. With this uh, benediction, I want to wind down this morning session. Thank you very much for participating in it and uh, encouraging us, uh, asking good questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vante. Thank you, Brian.